from Manhattan, it's The Cube. Covering AWS Summit New York City 2017. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Welcome back live to Midtown Manhattan, along with Stu Miniman, I am John Walls. We're here on theCUBE and we're wrapping up our coverage here at the AWS Summit. Um, again, kind of tough to get a feeling for just how many folks were here, but somewhere in that seven, eight, nine thousand dollar range, and most of them are still here, I think, out on the show floor here behind us. Good keynotes this morning, good programming throughout the day as well, and then really good buzz here on the show floor. So good day, I think, for AWS, Stu, and, and um, we've talked about, what it is kind of remarkable, to see the number of people who turned out for a regional show. Yeah, John, you know, I, I've been to some shows at the Javits Center where people wander in, they get some swag, they look for a free beer and a t-shirt, uh, and, and that's kind of there. These people are, you know, kind of digging in. I know uh, there's a bunch of sessions been going on. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the pavilion here has had all these little breakout sessions. There was one on you know, VMware and VMware on AWS and it was you know, not only the seats, which it was usually it's like, oh come on, you know, come get a prize and things right, like that. Right. There was you know, five rows of people standing pressed in and asking questions about like, and how do I set up the networking on this? How does this work? Things like this. So it's like a mini you know, AWS reInvent. So their big show, one we've done the Cube at a number of years, I've been there a number uh, of years, I commented on our intro that this is larger than the first Amazon reInvent that I went to like four years ago. How about that, so, in, in that sort of period of time? Yeah, and, and, and that's one of the things about Amazon and you know, really just public cloud in general and all these technologies. The growth and the speed of change is just amazing. It used to be, you know, uh, we, we talked from a software standpoint, it was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm tied to that Intel release of every 18 months uh, that, that I'm going to click out. Then it was like, okay, we kind of go to a yearly cycle. Uh, now it's, it, it was more like, you know, well, not only is a lot of software release, you know, continuous integration and continuous deployment CI CD, mm -hmm. which sometimes it's every six weeks, sometimes it's daily, but Amazon's releasing new features every day. We had, uh, we talked in the intro, it was like, oh, there were three major releases, and we had uh, a, a, the, the guy on talking about the machine learning stuff, and he's like, oh, you mean the three announcements that we had in machine learning, and we're like, oh, we only heard about one of those. Wait, right, you had a couple right. others underneath right. there? Oh, let's talk about the F1 compute instance and the FPGAs. There's always so much, and Amazon, when you go into any environment, in, in the little boxes that they put in there and you start peeling the onion. It's just, it, it's impressive. It and is. that's what, you know, there's just depth and customers are, you know, interested in it and people are using it. Uh, you know, I, I was used to so much of my career where it's like something gets announced and a year later it's like, hello, is anybody using this? As opposed to at this show, a bunch of the announcements, I already talked to a bunch of people that have been in private beta, they've been testing this out there, they're, they're excited about it um, and because it's just so easy to get on all of these new features. Right, and you, I mean, we've seen it here, we've heard from many people here from a lot of different walks of life. Uh, you mentioned some of the past shows, AWS Public Sector, I was at that not too long ago in Washington, D.C., and, and you see a company that's very, has its units very focused and very driven and doing very well, and they have the, the right relationships. Um, buzzword, serverless, right? <laughs> we heard it, heard it a lot today, serverless applications, serverless computing, from more than one source. We heard it from several folks, and so obviously this is not just a, a, a popular you know, a piece of nomenclature for the day. This is a trend, a theme that's going to be evolving and maturing over the next year or two. Yeah, I mean everybody, you know, for, for the last couple of years, they've kind of been looking at it with their head sideways, kind of, I, I'm not sure that I understand it. We talked to two companies today. Uh, it was uh, IOPipe and uh, a cloud guru that their company, their IT infrastructure was all built on serverless. So, and they're both got funding recently. So, you know, this isn't just, oh yeah, some developer does some cool stuff on the side, microservices, buzz buzz, uh, things like that. Uh, we talked to, you know, FICO is using serverless for their admin functions. Certain areas they're not ready uh, to, to roll it out across the board, governance, compliance, things like that. I need to understand it. It is still very early, but that being said, there's a lot of usage in it. Uh, last year it was, oh, uh, if you want to develop for uh, the Alexa platform, the Amazon uh, Echo uh, type thing, that uses serverless. So we're seeing lots and lots of cases that that really is a new way of architecting, uh, the way to roll out uh, really microservices dri driven applications. And when we talk about you know, the big challenge of our time, 
uh, is it, it's distributed architectures and how do I have new applications? We, we talked to a number of companies that, you know, moving from the old way of doing my application to building new applications, that, that's the long pole in the tent. This is not something that happens overnight, but I can start playing with it in a much smaller form factor and, and do it for pennies, not years and millions of dollars. So, um, you know, th th there is really, um, you know, serverless has really, in, in many ways, eclipsed kind of the containers discussion for the hot buzz in the industry. Uh, Kubernetes fits into that 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 whole picture, uh, but uh, you know, not just serverless in general, but AWS Lambda is the the leader of the pack out there, uh, and you know, yet another reason why you know Amazon just you know going strong, uh, the revenue's still doing well, keeps adding to what they're doing, and uh, you know, uh, you, you don't hear many people you know griping. Uh, you know, when you walk around uh, the, the show floor as to, right. you know, what they wish they had or, uh, you know, of course, you know, yeah, there's just, it, it, it's very positive well, experience. Yeah, I mean, you hear, you hear some, you know, the you know, criticism saying, yeah, they only had 42% growth year to year. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, not what it used to be, but 42, as you know, uh, uh, most people would gladly be in that position. What about, you, and your, your thoughts about the maturation of the cloud? Um, You've taught, you mentioned transformative and things are evolving and growing. I mean, so where do you put it now? I mean, it's this second phase, next phase, late phase. I mean, where are we in terms of what's happening and what AWS is making happen? Yeah, so uh, you know, a couple of years ago, we knew that you know, cloud is here to stay. There's still the joke, a friend, a friend of mine uh, in, in the keynote, 20,000 people registered uh, for this event. Uh, and it was like, well, you know, I guess this cloud thing might have legs. Right, work. Uh, so, right. you know, it, it, it's a, it, we are still early in the overall, uh, you know, wave of this. Uh, I've been in a number of conferences this year that we've done the Cube on. You talk about the infrastructure companies and companies that have built on virtualization. They said, you know, we went through a decade of tremendous growth with virtualization. Virtualization is still very important. Amazon fills their infrastructure not on VMware, but they, they, they leverage virtualization technology. But the next 10 years will be this huge wave of uh, re really that, you know, going up the uptick of the S-curve. So mm -hmm. we're past, uh, really, if, if you think about the, the, the classic crossing the chasm, you know, we're, we're in the you know, early majority, going to mid-majority of the people using it, and there's just, you know, no shortage of new use cases that people can use it for. You know, I, I, we, we, we've talked to lots of companies uh, that start up and say, I, I'm just leveraging cloud because it's easy. There's VCs that look at that as how to get involved, and as, I, as I've just mentioned before, there's companies now that are building themselves on serverless, so this is even right. kind of the next piece that, that follows these waves. Uh, so, we, we are early in cloud. Uh, if you look at kind of the overall TAM of IT, public cloud is still a very small piece. Uh, at Wikibon, we've been talking uh, for, for the last, gosh, I think two years about what we call uh, really the, the, the multi-cloud environment. There's true private cloud and there's public cloud. Mm -hmm. And how do I get that operational model that I can scale, I can build a, really a distributed architecture. Uh, I, I shift more to an operational expense rather than a capital expense. Uh, so it's flexibility, it's agility, it's speed. And uh, you know, it is, it's, it's very interesting and exciting times. There's no more exciting time to be in tech uh, than today, except maybe tomorrow, because <laughs> we know the only right. thing, the, right. the, the, the only thing constant yeah. is that the pace of change keeps increasing. It, it does increase, and, and, and two big drivers of that, we heard a lot again about today, artificial intelligence, machine learning. Um, what's, the, what, what, how, how would you rate, or how would you characterize the impetus that they're providing in terms of pushing the envelope? Yeah, so, uh, you know, absolutely, you know, there, there were some good announcements today. I don't know that there's any today that you'd say, I'm going to look back five years from now and be like, wow, I was in New York City when that was announced. Right, but just in general. But, but, but yeah. in general, um, let me say one of the things that I didn't hear today, I was a little bit disappointed. I mentioned it in the open. We talked to a couple of the partners here. Uh, you know, the Kubernetes adoption. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Adrian Cockroft got up on stage. He had written a blog post. There was an announcement last week, no mention of you know, where Kubernetes is going to fit in here. Um, you know, definitely they're committed to it, they're, uh, you know, making development, but uh, it, it's, you know, uh, you know, maybe something will come out in beta soon. I would expect by the time we get to uh, the reInvent show in November that we will have more clarity here. I was hoping to hear that more. Um, and that was something that didn't come out of Amazon, but they're embracing it. Customers are asking for it. Developers, there's a groundswell on that, uh, so they're involved with it. Uh, Lambda, serverless, 
absolutely, Amazon is at the vanguard, they're pushing things forward. Machine learning and IoT, uh, Amazon is at the table, it, it's still very early, they're driving a lot of uh, thing, things forward. Um, yeah, you know, we get it out from John, John Furrier, it's like, come on, there's no Bitcoin discussed today, why, 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 why is that? We hear, <laughs> you know, so some of the under, other vendors there, but, um, you know, Amazon is in all the appropriate conversations. Um, you know, I, I don't hear any, you know, there's not any wide gaps that you say customers like, hey, geez, you know, Amazon's not in this space, and I expect them to, and therefore, I'm going to choose another platform provider. That being said, it's not a winner take all, it is a multi cloud world. Yep. Most of these environments, uh, you know, we talked about even uh, if I do serverless, if I architect them a certain way, I can move them, uh, you know, and, and make changes. Kubernetes the same way. So, uh, you know, Amazon, uh, one of the things that they pride themselves on is they need to keep proving to their customers every month that they are the ones that they should use on. Uh, because otherwise it is you know, relatively easy uh, to, to make a change. But you know, they're the big dog, uh, they, they, they uh, you know, got the leadership position, and uh, you know, it's always impressive to watch them. Oh it is, and, and you speak of impressive, reInvent, just what, two and a half months away, three months away, uh, will be out there as well. Huge show, probably one of the, the largest shows by far uh, that, that we attend, and uh, looking forward to that, and seeing you down the road. Always a pleasure to be with you. Thanks so and, much, uh, John. Great job. As always, Stu Miniman does an outstanding job providing analysis for Wikibon. So on behalf of Stu and for all the crew here at theCUBE, we thank you for joining us here at the AWS Summit here in Midtown. We've been live at the Javits Center. Have a good week and we'll see you down the road here on theCUBE.